thank you for all for coming. It's great to see everybody. And uh, I know the Costco jokes have already been made, but hey, you're here instead of there, so we're grateful. Um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about how I personally got into entomology. So um, I grew up in Bayhurst, and when we moved there, there was we were sort of in a newish area, and there were some houses being built across the street. So um, they used to dig out the foundations for the houses. This is not at the time, but anyway, that's the house foundation. And then there'd be a period of time where nothing else would happen. So these would fill with rainwater, and then they'd be full of, uh, you know, all kinds of life and beetles and so on. And connected with that, sort of a few years later, I was in grade six, and we had to do a, an insect collection as part of our grade six. And just to say that my teacher in grade six was my dad, who's right there. Was <laughs> 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 my mom. And son. <laughs> Um, but anyway, thank you, Dad. So that was my very first insect collection, grade six. So the two things were connected because I had to do a collection and these fantastic um, house foundations full of water were across the street full of all kinds of fascinating things. And just quickly point out that this is a very large water beetle. It's probably um, 30, 40 millimeters. And when you know what you're doing as an entomologist, the little labels that you need on every specimen that has the location and who caught it and stuff shouldn't be visible on a needle that's that big. <laughs> so my first insect collection, the labels were huge, and we lost, we lost marks for that, but anyway. So that was my first insect collection. So um, again, the title of the book, or just to talk a bit about the book, so I didn't do the stouts or the millers or the porky tails. As you know, we all um, do different sections. But I did do a, a number of the insects, and I just want to repeat a couple things that have already been alluded to. One is that, you know, one of the challenges that we had at the beginning was choosing 300 to go in here because there's five or 6,000, so, you know, that was a challenge. And also, just to say, if you haven't had a chance to look at the book yet, or, you know, if you have, you'll know it's full of very beautiful, um, high-quality photos, some of which we took but many of which other people took, and a couple have been acknowledged here today. But just to say that we try our best to get local photographers, pictures from local photographers, and the vast majority are from them, are of that. So, so it's just some of the sections I did, the dragonflies and damselflies, a few of the beetles. This is a horntail or a timber fly, maybe some people call them. And this is a parasitic wasp that actually kills the larvae of the timber fly, and then there's a whole bunch of aquatics and, and so on. I just wanted to highlight the photos. I also did a lot of the uh, non-insect arthropods. So most of the book is about insects, but at the end, there's a section on um, other arthropods that are not insects. So again, just to acknowledge <coughs> the beautiful local photography for the spiders, and you'll, you'll have to either talk to me after or read the book to find out about all these things. But harvestmen, centipedes, millipedes, <coughs> uh, carpenters, or cell bugs, and pseudoscorpions. So they're all in there. And we were told we were supposed to talk about our favorite insects, which I don't think any of us really did. <laughs> which I'm sure Steph doesn't surprise us. But anyway. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't really have a favorite because I like a lot of different ones. But I do love aphids. And as was also mentioned before, I do really like aphids. And you probably, most of you might think of those as pests on your house plants or in your garden. But they're actually really fascinating. They have very complicated life cycles. And um, they come in many different <coughs> forms. This is a winged one, ones without wings. And one really neat thing about them that is that they're one of the few insects that gives birth to live young. So that's actually a mom aphid, and she's just giving birth to that that young one. And if you can, I don't know if you can see. Can you see that spot in there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you see they have red eyes. So that's another young one waiting to be. <laughs> So they're pretty cool. <laughs> However, <laughs> lady beetles do eat them. And, you know, you're all familiar with lady beetles probably at the same level pretty much as I was when we started this, writing this book. Um, you know, they're red or orange round spots. You know, you're familiar with all those. And these are in the book. Hopefully you learn something. You may not all know what their larvae look like. And you may not know what their pupae look like. So those are some different things in the book. Um, and some don't actually look like the typical lady beetle, but in the process of doing the research, because as I said, this wasn't a group that I was overly familiar with, uh, in the process of doing the research, I also discovered there's a lot of species that are really tiny and really different. And, you know,
it on top of two or three millimeters. So actually the process of writing the book has inspired me to go collect those. And, and that's what I'm planning to do this summer is go and try and find those. So just to finish off, I just want to say that I think the four authors, we've all been, we've all learned, because like Tom said, we did, we did have to take on sections we probably had to do a bit of work on. And we've all been inspired in different ways. And I hope you um, learned something and you're also inspired.